Welcome back. In this episode, I'm gonna compare the results with my previous chronograph test of this rifle. I wanted to make sure the barrel was clean to not influence the results and have a nice slippery bore. I bought the 7 rest to clean my air guns, but you need to not cock the barrel all the way to use it. It is easier when the barrel is cocked all the way though, but you need to rely on the bear trap safety. I'm using OP's small bore patches. I'm spraying ballistol on the patches to clean the barrel. Ballistol is supposed to be rubber safe, so I guess this is the best cleaner for air guns. I will also be using the DIY patch worm kit recommended by All Around with Hunter. All you need is a bit of grass trimmer line and you simply cut a little slip in it. I don't know if you can see the slip, slip. I don't know if that's a word, but you, you do it and that's all. And you slide the patch in the thing and you, you do this and that, right? Okay, go watch Hunter's video if you don't understand, even though you're seeing it right here. Go watch another video, I guess. All around with Hunter's channel is in the description. As you can see, it was quite a bit dirty, so I did two patches with ballast, but I will only show the first one, which is right here, very dirty. Make sure to clean the trimmer line from time to time because it gets really dirty and oily. I also wipe it off the excess ballast hole on the seal area before putting a new patch with silicone oil. I don't know if this really helps, I just do this from time to time because I like it. Let me know what you guys are using on your springers to clean and lube the chamber. This is a gas ram but it's about the same thing. To finish with I will be using Crossman silicone chamber oil to oil my piston seal to make sure this is not the reason why I got lower FPS or velocity in the la previous test just after the chamber. I will also put some on the breech shield to make sure it is not too dry. I got two drops in there with my needle bottle and shook the rifle a little bit to make sure the oil was getting down there. I also got quite a bit on the breech shield because it looked very dry. It probably needs to be replaced. I'm gonna do it when I want to. And then the annoying part of cocking the barrel on, on an air gun when you don't remove the bear trap even though that's a good thing because you left it cocked for a while without holding on is you gotta fire it. I suggest you wait a little bit more before shooting it because I probably shot half of the oil out of the chamber and let it sit barrel up just like I did after. But I ain't got no time for that. So let's test it with Crossman Point at 7.4s. I will be shooting 10 pellets to make sure the oil is not affecting too much the end results. We got a pretty good spread to start with, with the silicone chamber oil still in there. This was the rifle I was using to test all the pellets before using them in other crossman break barrels because I knew some could cause jams. So I don't know if the piston seal could be damaged or if this is the full power out of the box. One thing I know, they never get up to 495 FPS. But I do think this is a bit low, even though I did not test any other rifles. It did start to get better, so now let's see what 5 shots can do. So let's take a look at the results. We got a spread of 18 with an average velocity of 456.6. So to make it quicker for me to edit and because I lost some files because they got corrupted, here are the results. So from what I can tell, we did lose a bit of consistency with the Crossman Premier Pointed 7.4s. In the 
the other end, Crossman Wadcutter 7.4s did gain consistency and velocity. Next we add the RWS OB 7.0 brain which seems to like the smoothness of the chamfer, gain a little bit of consistency but still needs to be seated in order to not cause a jam. For the Crushman Essential Central Domes, I'm still not impressed by my pronunciation and by the results. If you want to see more, go take a look at the previous videos which are linked in the bio. As an early conclusion, this might be a win some lose some situation depending on which pellet you're using, so make sure you know what you're doing if you plan on doing this. It will now fit any pellet without a pellet heater, but this rifle is Canadian detuned and don't have the power to push them out. As always, thanks for watching and subscribe for more.